define magnetic flux density. So they're saying define, we talk in terms of the mathematical expression. We know that the magnetic flux density, it's the force or the magnetic force exerted per unit length per unit current such that the length of the wire or the current is perpendicular to the field. Next, we have electrons, each of mass m and charge q are accelerated from rest in the vacuum through a potential difference v. Derive an expression in terms of m, q, v for the final speed of the electrons. Explain your working. So we know that in this case, what would happen is that there would be some change in the potential energy when they're accelerated, right? And that change in potential energy is what will cause them to move, which is just the kinetic energy. So that means that the change in potential energy is giving rise to the change in the kinetic energy of the system. We know that for uh, this mass or this charge, which is accelerated uh, from rest, the potential energy for charge is given as Q times the potential difference, which is equal to half mv squared. Now, from this thing, we can say that V is the square root of 2QV over M. And that is the equation that we were looking for. Next, we have the accelerated electrons in part B are injected at a point S into a region of the uniform magnetic field. So it is into the region of the uniform magnetic field uh, of density B. This is the region of uniform magnetic field, which is the flux density B. And the path of electrons in this are like this. They're moving in this direction clockwise. The electrons move at right angles to the direction of the magnetic field. Clearly, if the magnetic field is into the paper, they are moving at right angles to it. The path of the electrons is a circle of radius r. We are required to show that the specific charge q over m of the electrons is given by this expression. Now, what is happening? If you go and look back over here, basically, there is some, there would be some magnetic force, right? But this thing is moving in a circle. So the magnetic force is what is providing it the centripetal force. So that this keeps moving in a circle, which means that the two forces can be equated such that Fm is equal to Fc. And we know that the magnetic force of a charged particle that is moving with some speed v inside some magnetic field b is given as Qvb, which would be equal to the centripetal force. And the centripetal force is just mv squared over r. So one V cancels like this, and therefore we get Q and divide by M. So it take over here and then take this over there. So this becomes two, uh, my mistake. This would become Q over M and you have V over R times B, right? But remember, look at this equation. This is this V is the potential difference, the, the one that was applied, right? And we have already figured out the velocity in the previous part to be equal to square root of 2QV over M. Now, what would happen over here is you put this in this expression, so you get square root 2QV over M divided by RB, right? But look at this thing. This is just a q over m is in this square root as well. So I have to take it outside. So what I can do is I can do q squared over m squared square both sides. And this would be 2qv by m over rb, right? And rb would be squared, both of them. Uh, th so basically we're using small r, so let's just keep using that. And now what would happen is that this q would cancel with this one, this m would cancel with this one, and you are finally left with, I'll write it over here, q over m is equal to 2v over rb whole squared, which is just r squared b squared, which is exactly what we wanted to prove. Next part says electrons are accelerated to a potential difference of voltage 230 volts. The electrons are injected normally into the magnetic flux density 0.38 millitesla. Normally, so it means that they are injected perpendicular uh, to the magnetic field. The radius r of the circular orbit is also given as 14 centimeters. Use this information to compute the value of the specific charge of the electron. Clearly, the specific charge of the electron, we just wrote it down, is equal to Q over M 2V by B squared R squared. Now, we have the value for the potential difference as 230 volts. We have 
the value for the magnetic flux density 0 0.38 into 10 raised to power minus 3 tesla and we have the radius as 0 0.14 meters now that just means that all we have to do is put these values in here this would be 2 times 230 volts divided by 0 0.38 into 10 raised to power minus 3 tesla squared times 0 0.14 squared so this gives me q over m being equal to 1.6 into 10 raised to power 11 coulombs per kilogram 1.6 into 10 raised to power 11. The next part says, suggest why the arrangement outlined in part 2 using the same values of B and V is not practical for the determination of specific charge of alpha particles. So this is the arrangement uh, in part 2. Electrons are in accelerated through a potential difference V of 230 volts, right? So in this arrangement, they're injected normally to the magnetic flux density and electrons are the particles that are injected. Now, what about Q over M for alpha particles? We know that the specific charge for the alpha particles is much smaller. Why? Because it is Q over M, but the mass M for alpha particles is much, much greater than the mass of an electron, which means that the total thing Q over M is very small. So if Q over M would be very small, then remember Q over M is what? 2V over B squared r squared if q over m is very small r would be extremely large so it would form a very big circle and hence it is not practical to determine the specific charge of alpha particles because you would need a lot more space so this implies that r would be high 